by mortuary attendants doing their rounds at night. A Facebook post of a mother telling of her horror in the hands of the morgue attendants who waylaid her as she walked to the newborn unit triggered confessions from other mothers claiming to have been sexually harassed uh, as well. But the hospital dismissed this and investigations by the DCI uh, followed. Right now we speak to Kenyatta National Hospital CEO Lily Koros. Thank you so much for making time uh, for us. Keep talking to us. The hashtag is Sunday Live on Twitter. You can text us at double two four double two. We'll take a look at a few tweets now. Phil Mwangi says Kenya Nash Kenyatta National Hospital is the largest health faci facility in Eastern Central Africa. Hence must be highly secured at all times. The entire saga is sickening. Arrests and prosecutions must be made as soon as possible. Uh, Orango says, the issue at KNH is very disturbing. Hope no stone will be left unturned and perpetrators will be brought to book. Uh, Abdul Karim says, women rights are human rights. It is shocking to hear the filth coming from KNH. Something needs to be done urgently. And uh, Rocky Rage, can Koros confidently tell us why mothers have to walk f uh, flights to go? flights to go breastfeed their kids in another floor. How can Koros as a mother say nothing has been put in the suggestion box? Okay, Koros will uh, respond to some of those uh, questions. And Abdallah Mdambo says, did the KNH management really think through their denial? Will women claim rape, including threats from mortuary attendants to them to comply for fun, surely? Okay, and on double two four double two, you can keep that tweeting us. Uh, the hashtag is Sunday Live. Uh, on double two four double two, these are some of the texts you're sending. Martin Dare in Mombasa, Tudor, KNH must come out clear and restore confidence quickly within the facility to quash any hidden agenda by bringing perpetrators to book. No more hide and seek games. Mothers must be respected. Esther Masharia, please ask Coros to explain the alarming rate of patients losing their items at night from phones, jewelry to money, especially in the women wards. And we have even reported these cases. KNH security is very poor. Admit and find a way forward. And Peter Ndanga in at the river, please ask her to explain why mothers are on the sixth floor and their babies on the first floor. Again, this question has been asked. Well, uh, we'll try and ask as much questions as we can, uh, depending on the time we have. So it started with a Facebook post. Uh, that was on Friday, I think, or Thursday, which triggered confessions from others alleging sexual harassment and even attempted rape. Uh, you immediately denied this. Why? Thank you, Sin. Uh, I think let me start first of all by really appreciating this opportunity to put record straight that you've given me this time. Uh, may I say that uh, I don't think it was a denial. And probably this may not still be taken well, but mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is when the allegation actually came out or in the morning of Friday, what we did as management is first of all to come together, put our minds together so that we can actually see whether there is any truth in it. Mm -hmm. And so this is the reason why we requested that we are going to address the press at 3 p.m. So from morning, we actually had to run up and down to find out whether there is any truth in it. And to say this is because there are records in the institution whereby we get allegations, we get uh, incidences that are reported on day-to-day -day basis. I am not saying that Kenyatta National Hospital is watertight in terms of security. But I was talking specifically on this particular issue of rape. That among all the complaints that have come to my office, in which I handle on a day-to-day basis, or rather I read actually on a day-to-day basis from the security, there was no one allegations or uh, complaint on rape cases. Okay. You're saying, you're saying you, I mean, from the, uh, the morning to 3 p.m., you constituted a team and you started looking at all the issues around those allegations. Yes. That is let, enough let, time, you think, for you to say no. these things aren't true? Uh, saying, let me say this. It is not adequate time. And in fact, when I was even talking to the media, I said, we scanned through. And whatever we scanned through, mm -hmm. nothing is already pointing at this line. However, we've gone ahead to invite the DCI, who can now look at this thing more objectively and independently, to an act if there's anything else. And that was in my statement. Mm -hmm. But in the real sense, whatever we had received all along in the many years, we don't have such allegations. I think that was my point. And that is not to say that my people are perfect okay. or this cannot happen. Okay. But I said, can we wait and get now to the bottom of it in case there's anything. All right. But as at that time, there's nothing that we saw that was pointing at that point. But that you head. still went ahead. Uh, I mean, fair enough. I mean, from uh, the, the initial investigations and uh, you, I mean, you constituted a team and you wanted to know what find out what, what happened. But in your statement, you said this, and this is very uh, 
I mean, from how you, 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 you said it, and I'll read it to you. You said the damning and untrue social media report is authored in bad faith and the members of public of goodwill need to ignore. KNH management and staff wish to assure patients and relatives that their security and medical care is our priority. You say the damning and untrue. You have already judged them as being untrue. Usain, I want to say that by the time I was saying this, I was saying from the information that we had, in case there'll be any other information, I think that will still be fine. We would actually step it up to that point. But from what we had seen, and as I said, and this actually at some point I felt like coming with my files. Mm -hmm. I have very big files on these issues. Mm -hmm. On, on we, these issues of sexual harassment and rape? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. On complaints. The general complaints on, of on the hospital. hospital okay. And we actually take them so seriously that I chair one of the committees. There is a committee that is chaired by the uh, corporate affairs, which handles the general complaints. I handle the complaints that, are that may be touching on a bit of integrity. And we have to investigate every single complaint and give feedback to the customers. And I think I was speaking from this point of view. I don't think I was wrong at that point. And mm -hmm. that's why I said, if there's anything that is hidden, then let's give the authorities that are relevant the opportunity to investigate. Okay, and when they come up, we will take action. And I believe it's in my statement. It's in your statement, not, not yes. about because you said again, since we take every complaint seriously, we would like to ask every Kenyans who has experienced any informed sexual harassment in the hospital to report to, to the customer uh, care offices. You say that, I mean, no doubt about it. But the fact that you say this is untrue and damning and Kenyans should ignore it. It was you passing judgment and yet you are saying you're calling for investigations. But before we even come to that, I mean, we had sources telling us, as Citizen TV, and we had a report uh, on Friday and, and, and on Saturday, we had a victim of this speaking. This is something she said happened to her in 2015. We've had members of parliament going there and talking to the women, some, of, some who have said they have seen these things happening. We have had several, and as you saw, Facebook posts and social media posts of people saying this happened to them. Would you think they'll be saying all these if it wasn't true, if there was nothing happening there? Let me say this, uh, Hussein, that uh, as I said, is that I'm not dismissing. It could have happened, it may not have happened. But as we are right now, we don't know whether they happened. And again, the other question I was asking, and without looking like I'm mm -hmm. actually trying mm -hmm. to discredit what they are saying, mm -hmm. is that where I sit as a mother, and I say this again and again when I was addressing the press, mm -hmm. that I am first of all a woman. I am a mother before I am a CEO. If such a thing would happen to me, I am very sure I'll not sit and pack my things and go home as I suffer from that kind of uh, an experience. I will definitely try to do something. I'll definitely try to tell someone. And this is what I, why, I, why I was saying, can we come out and say? Because from where we sit now, we cannot say we can help without that information. In Kenyatta National Hospital, we have a gender-based violence center of excellence, actually, that was opened way back in 2015 by Her Excellency, the, uh, the First Lady. Mm -hmm. And we do attend to patients from outside, the victims of violence, uh, gender-based violence. At some point, I'm asking myself, why is it that our own patients cannot make use of such a kind of facility that we have within, which we don't charge even a shilling? It is actually fully sponsored. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the questions that are yeah, running yeah. through my mind. Right. Yes. I mean, and, and fair enough, they, have, they can go, and that's a good initiative, they can go and report. But then again, you also know the nature of such things. I'm not saying it has happened, by the way, these are allegations. But I'm, 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 t I'm saying, I mean, we know the nature of such crimes and how not everybody is open and willing to go and speak about it. I mean, if you are, God forbid that it happens to you, as you said, you would definitely go and speak about it. But you also have to appreciate the fact that not every patient will be free to talk to people about what has happened to, to them. Thank you, Usain. And this is why I'm saying the media said it is rampant. It is a day-to-day -day thing. It is normal. Even the person actually who witnessed was saying it's something that is normal. It is known. You want to tell me, Usain, that among all the mothers that are claiming that they have actually gone through this, none was brave enough to come out and say, I have been assaulted. Or have been harassed sexually. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know that. Precisely. Really. So the same that. questions, but, Usain, that you're asking me are the same questions but, that I'm asking myself. Right. But would you also say, 
that this could have happened to women and they were afraid of coming out and speaking about it. It is possible. Now, Hussein, it is possible. And this is why I said, in case I have said that it has not come to my new and it happened, please come out and help us so that we can help each other. Okay. I even gave the contacts on how we can be able to to be reached. Okay. Yes. Some took offense with, with how you initially responded to this. Uh, and you've talked about it, you being a woman, and, and, and I mean, what if, if you had gone through this, what you have done. Some actually saying you being a woman and how dismissive you are in the first place without necessarily tra trying to find out exactly what happened and whether that was right. We saw Health Cabinet Secretary Mailu ordering a probe uh, and saying that findings should be given tomorrow. First, how are we with that probe? What is going on now? The internal uh, report is going on, mm -hmm. and it will be given as per his directive. So, sorry, you're saying? The, the, the internal investigations are going on, and the report will be given as per his directive by the close of business tomorrow. By, the, that is the internal report within yes, the NH. But even, now, not just because of the directive, let me say this, and this is what I said. We take every complaint seriously. And as I mentioned also myself, is that we are going to investigate. And when the uh, CS say that, the investigation was starting, and of course, with this directive, we had to beat the deadline. And so this is why we are putting together the report, and mm -hmm. we are going to present it to him. Okay. That is the internal one. But of course, the one for the CID also picked up immediately, and I believe they are the ones to talk about that one. So from the report, what you have seen initially, if you're going to give it tomorrow, Le uh, let me these know, cases, let <laughs> I mean, is, is it true that this has happened from what you've seen? Um, Hussein, let me not preempt. I think let's, let's let the report come tomorrow through the journal in which it, had, it has been asked. All right. Thank you. Okay, now that you say it again on this report, now that you say it, the damning and untrue social media report is offered in bad faith and the members of the public of, good, uh, uh, public of goodwill uh, need to ignore this. You said that. I did. As the CEO of Kenyatta National Hospital doing an internal probe, who is to trust that probe? Because you have already taken a position and said, these are untrue. Who is to trust the findings of that probe now? Now, uh, Hussein, I'll say this. You know, the probe you're doing is based on documentation. Isn't it? Which you already, well, you already said we haven't received any, any complaints. So far, the complaints are, are the ones that I've talked about. But there could be other ways and means by talking to the, uh, to the, to the, to the, uh, to the victims or rather the people who are concerned. However, even if my report may not be uh, uh, believed, so to say, I think there is a body that is going to give a comprehensive report thereafter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll leave it at that for now. Um, I'll take a look at some of the SMSs and tweets coming in. Lydia from Nairobi, and this we've seen uh, from another tweet and a, and a text says, "Why will the wards for these mothers be a flow or two from their babies with poor lighting, no security at night, and worse, some are recuperating even from surgeries? Can something be done about that?" Thank you, Sen. Um, that is a concern that was raised actually by many of the visitors that have even visited us. And I want to say that uh, Kenyatta National Hospital, the complex, that is what we see, the tower block, was actually purposely built. And it was built for specific use, specific level. That is how it was designed initially. Probably these other issues were not foreseen. Uh, however, what we have said is that if there is a way we can be able to reorganize, and this is what we were discussing today. I want to also mention that the board of the institution uh, met today because we don't we are not taking this thing lightly mm -hmm. and they discussed and these are some of the areas that they touched on that can we explore the possibility of moving uh, the mothers near to the uh, to the babies and this is the the, 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 the the directive that was given to the management which is led by myself that we explore that possibility but the truth of the matter as I told you is that initially the hospital was built specifically for specific use so where the babies are was built for the babies where the, 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 the mothers are staying, or rather the labor ward, is built specifically for labor ward. So we'll try to see how to reorganize. Of course, when we sit together and put our heads together with the clinicians, we'll try to see whether it's possible to actually reorganize and bring the mothers uh, 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 to, to where the babies co uh, are staying at the moment. Mm -hmm. But as at now, we don't have that solution because where the babies are, there is one ward which is being used also by uh, mothers the gynecological mothers which are also going through treatment. So that one we are not dismissing, we are looking at it, we want to see. But let's also appreciate one thing. Kenyatta National Hospital, as it is right now, is fully occupied. We have a 2,060 bed capacity. I do hear sometimes being quoted as 2,500, that mm -hmm. is not true. We have 2,060. 
and all these beds are filled at any given time like this morning i had 2160 patients in that uh, that hospital so all these beds are there are occupied and so we try to accommodate mothers in various areas and this is actually in level three and fast uh, and ground flow and the babies are in first flow so mm -hmm. that uh, i also had something about sixth flow that yeah. is not true the mothers are in first uh, ground flow and third okay and this is another test from Rhoda in Athiriva who says maternity wing is extremely congested. Again, uh, the, the MPs went on a fact-finding mission yesterday, talked about that. Uh, maternity ward where they expected slightly under 30, 18 actually. 28. Capacity. 28? Yes. They, they talked about 18. Okay. And uh, they said they found 93 people there. That's a fact, uh, Hussein. Uh, our wards are actually between 28 and 36 patients. But you'll not be surprised to get patients up to 90 even 100 sometimes and this is because we cannot turn away the patients they are better off with us getting the services other than saying that we need 28 and the others will go to where so what we are just urging the uh, government and uh, the, the county government uh, uh, particularly mm -hmm. is that if they improve their facilities then they'll be able to offload some of the uh, cases that we don't actually need to handle in kenyatta nation hospital we revert back to the referral hospital that we should be by our mandate and then we'll be able now to handle the 28 mothers who are being referred to us either because of the complications or highly specialized services that they require from Kenyatta National Hospital so it is true but then I think this is something that we weigh and say which is a better evil to have these mothers with us get the services or to send them away okay is it okay I'll, I'll talk about that challenge shortly but in August last year and I, I believe we have those pictures uh, our crew did a story about the congestion there and the facilities there where women were seen sharing beds and others went for days without even showering. Has anything been changed since then or are you facing the same problems? Um, probably I may not talk exactly to what you have just mentioned because uh, that one also had not come to my account. But it is true that the sharing is there. And what we do mm -hmm. is just to avail more uh, beddings and more uh, maybe mattresses whenever we need to have them share there. The, the word so that is what we do from day to day we also endeavor as much as possible to um, ensure that the turnover of the beddings or rather the linen so to say is as good to meet the numbers that we are having okay then so definitely I mean you have bigger challenges here are these some things that you've been I mean, I mean is this have you been raising concerns about these challenges because now clearly the way you're talking that you cannot turn away some of these mothers uh, it means there's also an issue of funding and expansion. Have you been raising such issues? And what is the way forward? What are you looking at? What are you planning? Th thank you, Sen. Uh, we've been raising this, and I don't want to say, actually, uh, nothing is happening because when we raise the issue of the congestion, in fact, we've had meetings with the county of Nairobi, specifically the former governor, whereby we discussed and we formed a team which was supposed to be looking at what we are supposed to do together to ensure that we uh, share the burden or rather ensure that everyone does their, uh, take their responsibility. We have that team in place, but of course now it requires also the facilities in the county level to be improved first of all, so that when we are offloading, we are also offloading mothers mm. and patients generally to facilities whereby they can still find the services. So this one is ongoing. And even the CS, uh, Dr. Mailu, talked about this. Uh, some time back that we are working towards making Kenyatta again a referral hospital and so this will only work when we have improved the other facilities he had a meeting with us together with the governor Nairobi then and also right now we are still engaging we have also presented our cases even to the governors uh, the council of governors mm -hmm. in various forums okay. to highlight some of these issues and they are they were positive but I think the implementation is what is taking time. All right, of course, there are several other crucial and key departments at Kenyatta National Hospital that we can talk about on uh, for days on end. We'll be calling you in the next uh, few days or months uh, to talk about the issues at Kenyatta National Hospital. I'll, I'll read this final uh, text before we leave. Uh, somebody says, Hussein, you got a bill to clear in the hospital. You've just gone through your labor pain, which is so tiresome. How will you be able to locate those gender-based desks? Kenyatta National Hospital should, should admit we women go through so much there. Finally, as I leave and as you respond to that, do you think you jumped the gun? Do you regret that you dismissed all this as untrue before uh, investigations are done? Hussein, 
I don't regret, not because I say that I jumped the gun and that is the you truth. You think you jumped but the gun? But according to me, no, I don't think. According to me, I gave the sequence of events. I, I gave the facts before I said we are still open for investigations. Probably the person listening could have gotten me wrong. But I didn't say this is out, we are not going to think about it. I finally actually brought out that and in writing that, that we have written. Right. Yes. And but we that was written. a contradiction in itself, isn't it? When you say this is untrue, but we'll do some investigations. That far where I was, it was untrue. According to me, and I said actually according to us. Hussein, I said according to us, what we have said, what we have scanned so far, it is not true. And then on the issue of mothers going mm -hmm, through mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and also the issue of uh, getting the gender-based violence uh, center, I want to inform them that there is a desk actually at accident and emergency with a counselor who is there always. Okay. So whenever they need help, they are there and they'll be taken through the process and taken to the center and given the services okay and so many questions still coming in we're sorry we don't really have time for this again somebody saying how do you handle security in dark corridors of the hospital that is james uh karani karani yeah. thank you we've yeah. seen that yes and you've already seen that as well okay Your the lighting may everything. not be as bright but actually that is what also the board has pointed out that we we, we increase the lighting and also uh ensure that we have uh, security increased. Actually, the, they've given us the go-ahead to engage more security with an immediate effect, of course, through the procurement process so that we don't mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. uh, break the rules in order to ensure that we have adequate security uh, staff across. All right. Lily Koros is the CEO of Kenyatta National Hospital. Thank you so much for making time uh, for us tonight on Sunday Live. Keep talking to us. The hashtag is Sunday Live on Twitter. You can text us on the board 24. We'll take a look at a, very, uh, a few tweets again before we take a break. Uh, your feedback, you are saying, uh, Cheru Kirui, Lily Koros is clean. What we need to do is improve the facility security. Let's not politicize the issue. Uh, Lynn Kish says, the arrangements should be changed. A woman who has just delivered is not strong enough to walk all those trips. And Kwimukara says, Madam CEO should understand victims of gender-based violence don't go shouting. She should offer psychological help to the mothers. CID won't help the victims. Uh, need protection. We'll keep talking to us. The hashtag is Sunday Live on Twitter and you can text us on 22422. But Adam will be back with sports news after this break.